China's new ambassador to the United States issuing a warning on the state of relations between the two countries after arriving in New York City yesterday. Watch this. I have come here to safeguard China's interests. I have come here to uh, enhance China-U.S. exchanges and cooperation. And this is my uh, important mission. At present, uh, Sino-U.S. relations is facing serious difficulties and challenges. Joining me right now is AFPI Senior Fellow and Chairman of the China Policy Initiative, D.C. International Advisory CEO and former Deputy National Security Advisor for Dick Cheney, Steve Yates is with us. Steve, welcome back to the program. Your reaction to what we just heard from the ambassador, and let me just point out that the Wall Street Journal is reporting that this week the White House is having a dinner uh, for Gina Raimondo and her counterpart, uh, apparently, I'm not sure if he is going, but there is a dinner uh, where we're going to see Thursday night to the two sides try to thaw the upset. Your reaction? Well, this thaw theme has been spun out for a little bit of time. It was central to the president's remarks at the G7 meeting in Japan. Uh, unfortunately, it was immediately followed by some things that were not so thawing uh, by the Chinese side. Uh, and, of course, what the ambassador says is in part accurate. There are tensions in U.S.-China relations. Most of them are because of the actions taken by Xi Jinping and his government, since he's sort of consolidated power, whether it's stomping on the Uyghurs and Xinjiang. Xinjiang, Hong Kong's freedom, the threats against Taiwan, and then trying to snatch up sensitive uh, land in the United States and other kinds of activities, not to mention a virus that went out into the world deliberately. So uh, there's a whole list of things. Yes, there's tension. Congratulations, Mr. Ambassador. What are you going to do to get your side to be more friendly? Well, that's exactly right. And that's why I question why the United States always appears to be on our heels. I mean, it's been the CCP that has started this economic war. I'm looking at background on the economic coercion and the PRC's playbook right now from the House Foreign Affairs Committee, because let's be clear about the G7. The G7 was largely a meeting of seven countries who were trying to figure out how to react to China's economic coercion. And yet you have here China having appearing to have the upper hand. They've got to have a dinner at the White House with Gina Raimondo to try to thaw things out. Why are we on on the, the, the losing end here, that it appears that the U.S. did something. It wasn't the U.S. who sent a spy balloon into the country and sent uh, military secrets back to Beijing in real time. Right. Well, you hit on the key word, which is react. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of our leaders for way too long have been doing. And we shouldn't really be bashful about working together with our allies. The president uh, vastly overstated how much unity there was among the G7 in dealing with the China challenge. After all, there's been a pretty significant struggle among the G7 to get things right with Russia over the last couple of years. We're not really that far ahead when dealing with the China challenge. And the Chinese government knows it. And that's why I think they feel like they're comfortable being on the offensive. They can get away with these provocations. And our side just wants to sue for peace. There's sort of an endearing American quality, believing sort of in a missionary ethos that we can sit down and break bread and things will work out. But you've got an aggressor and they're on their game. Yeah. So COVID-19 released uh, from a Wuhan lab. Uh, no response. We can't get an investigation. Cover up from the Chinese Communist Party. No response. Can't get an investigation into Wuhan. A surveillance balloon across the country for, for, for a week, no response. Intellectual property theft, same thing. Uh, the chairman of the House Select Committee on China, Mike Gallagher, says the U.S. needs to make clear the People's Republic of China that it will not tolerate economic coercion against its companies or its allies after Beijing announced it's banning firms from buying Micron semiconductor chips. He's calling on the Commerce Department to blacklist China's uh, change in memory technologies in response, but the White House is also responding to the Micron ban in this way. Watch this. The recent announcement by the PRC regarding Micron, we believe, are, are not, based, uh, not based in fact. And so the Department of Commerce is engaged directly with the PRC to detail our views on this. Uh, we are tr we're certainly troubled by the action and the recent raids and targeting of uh, American, uh, American firms, American companies. Uh, these actions are inconsistent with the PRC's uh, assertions that it is uh, opening its markets and committed to a transparent regulatory uh, framework.
Steve, look, China does whatever it wants. I mean, now it's it's deciding to to go in and raid uh, foreign companies. And and I spoke with the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee last week, Michael McCall, who told me these new national security laws enable Beijing to go into any American company that they want, like they did to Bain Consulting. Here's Michael McCall. Watch this. They set up all these national security laws that allow them to go in and raid uh, American companies in China. But most disturbingly is a quote from Xi Jinping himself, who says, we want to get foreign nations uh, uh, dependent on our supply chains so that down the road we can cut them off from these supply chains. It's very clear what their intention is here. And, you know, we saw it after COVID with medical. We see it with rare earth mineral and also semiconductors. If they can make the world dependent on them with supply chain, they also have the power to cut it off. And that came out of Chairman Xi's own mouth, out of his words. And we have to take that seriously. Uh, Steve, is this White House taking any of this seriously? I mean, Xi Jinping said we want to get everybody reliant on our supply chain so that we can cut it off when we deem appropriate. No, I think that Chairman Gallagher and Chairman McCall are basically on the right path. No, this White House is not taking it seriously. We have one side in Beijing that is engaging in power and coercion and manipulation and control. And we have another side in Washington that is playing public relations legal word games. Yeah. Which of these two do you think is going to win? Well, uh, and so uh, we have it's, it's basically a mismatched game. And our side is not taking it seriously. And Beijing is encroaching. Now, I think there are some responses out in the states and in the Congress, and I hope the American people are dialing into that. Yeah, I mean, it's even worse than that. Batsy, jump in here, because I want you to look at this graphic that, we, that we're putting up, because not only are we on so soft on China, but we're also giving China the upper hand. As soon as Joe Biden walked into the Oval Office, first thing he does is cancel the China initiative. Then he waves sanctions on Putin's pipeline into Europe. What is in the U.S.'s interest to waive sanctions on the Nord Stream 2, which is exactly what he did? And then after that, it goes on and on the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan it just invited aggression your reaction yeah I mean it's so interesting because I think it's so clear to us that the Democrats have this very big problem with China they are soft on China from a foreign policy point of view and they are soft on China from a domestic policy point of view we used to call it you know globalization outsourcing offshoring of manufacturing now we call it supply chain right my question is is you know do the Chinese know this as well like is there a sense in China among the CCP does Chairman Xi know how much better it is for him with the Democrats is he gunning for for, for President Biden, is that something that they are aware of on their end as well? Uh, I, I, think he, I, I think he's got his guy in there. He put his guy in there in 2020. Steve, how do you see it? Well, there's an awful lot of ties between the Biden family and a lot of people in the upper echelons of corporate America and elsewhere uh, that just like Chairman McCall was talking about dependency and being willing to cut off to use that leverage. That's what that's what she is all about. It's what the Communist Party is all about. It's power, leverage and manipulation. They don't really care about constituent interest and they don't really have to be accountable for results. They just go after what their objectives are. Uh any, any thoughts on where this is going, Steve? Well, I unfortunately think that we're going to have a lot of coercive behavior by Chinese, especially over the next couple of years. And my hope is that it doesn't turn into a hot conflict. The, the military exchanges in East Asia seem to have fallen into a, a more regular rhythm, mm -hmm. less provocative. Uh, but uh, this is a dangerous situation. And unless we get real leadership, real pushback, and really build America back up with confidence yeah. and protect against these things, we're not really going to be in a good position well, going forward. Uh, real quick, I got to ask the two investors at the table this question, because back in 2013, Joe Biden sent a, uh, signed a memorandum of understanding right. uh, to allow hundreds of Chinese companies to trade on U.S. exchanges and not follow the U.S. auditing rules. How dumb is that? OK, and, 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 and as an investor, yeah. do you want to buy into Chinese companies and in effect, <laughs> expand, you know, fund the expansion of the CCP? And what about the idea that American companies, including 
including Apple, by the way. The CCP officials can just march in there and raid the place and take the intellectual property. Absolutely not. I wouldn't even go there with Adam's money to invest in those companies. I mean, I, I remember going to China and taking a group of investors in 2007, 2008, <clears throat> and our tour guides then would say there's three sets of books. There's one for the American investors, one for the people that are here, and then yeah. one of the set of the real books. There's no reason to go for that, and especially just leniency on accounting. Where has no, that ever crazy. ended us? Exactly. Enron? I mean, I mean, if we do it with American companies, now we're going to give it to Chinese? Yeah, exactly. No, for, for me, China is a no-go zone. I won't touch it. I think Alibaba is doing a great business, but I'm not going to touch it. I'd much rather invest right here in the U.S. Well, we'll see if corporate America gets the memo, Steve, because it's uh, corporate America that, uh, I guess, continues to lobby for the CCP in, in many different ways. Isn't that right? Real quick. Absolutely true. It's been true for far too okay. long. I think the American people are on to it. The, we really need our leadership to jump on board this. Steve, thanks very much for your insight. Steve Yates joining us this morning. We appreciate it.